All right, so now that we've talked about some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using today, we're going to be jumping into the main part of our lesson, which is going to be taking place mostly in the simulation. So in a second here, I'm going to go ahead and get the simulation opened up for myself. Um, and if you have access to Amplify at home, I'm going to walk through the steps on this video. But if you can get the simulation open for yourself, remember, by you doing the work, you're always going to be learning more than just following along as we do it in the video. So please make sure if you've got a link or a way that you can log in and get to that, that you open up that simulation. Um, and you'll know you're in the right place when you open it up and you see this, um, and then click on this free explore. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in my window. Your window might look a little bit different, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are in chapter one of evolutionary history and that you're going to lesson 1.4. That's our lesson for today. And then activity three here is tracing structures in an evolutionary tree. So I'm gonna click on that one and it will in a second here pop up for that simulation. And again, this is something that if you haven't grabbed one yet, you're gonna probably wanna have a pencil and a piece of paper to jot down some of your thoughts. And then, like I said, we're gonna click on the free explore. And then we should see this map view. So if you are someone who is working on this independently at home, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the slide that you are going to want to pause on for yourself as you're working at home. So this right here is the main question that you're going to want to explore. We've started to talk about all different types of structures. Um, and in the simulation, you're going to want to find some of these different structures and see if you can look for different organisms that share similar structures. Once you've found at least two organisms that share the structure completed, you're gonna to wanna to describe that using our new vocabulary. So this is the paragraph right here that you're gonna to wanna to write out on your piece of paper. And then in each of these blanks are where you're gonna put different words from the word bank. Um, just to kind of show those of you that are gonna to start to work on this independently for yourself. One last thing, you're gonna to wanna to be making sure that you are working in the tree ma ma part of the model right here. Um, and then clicking into the animals. And then by clicking on these little eyes, you're gonna to start to see where they're talking about shared structures as we go down the tree. Um, and you can just continue to open up and you're gonna see that this continues to expand. So you might have to continue to expand a little bit and go through here or maybe make it smaller and then click on what are some of these different structures that they're explaining as we're going down that the descendants are acquiring from those ancestor species. So again, if you are working on it at home, go ahead and pause the video here, pick out a couple of these structures and see if you can find what species have each of those. Um, and then when you're done, go ahead and finish up this slide here. Uh, I'm gonna walk through it on the simulation. So if you want to skip that part once you've done it independently, uh, just fast forward this video until you get to the blue slide. The blue slide is gonna be where we join back up uh, together as a group. All right, so for those of you that are going to be following along um, on here with the simulation, the first um, structure that we're gonna be looking for in our tree of life is going to be the backbone. We're gonna be looking for organisms that share that as their similar structure. So let's bounce back into here. And I'm just gonna to start to click through in the vertebrae tab because actually if I am clicking through these, what we're gonna notice is this tree of life starts off with some more simple organisms. And I know based on my background knowledge that mushrooms do not have a backbone. So I'm gonna to continue to kind of click through this 
I might check and see what are some of these features that they're talking about. We see that it says tissues, nerve cells, muscles, so still we have not found uh, our backbone. And getting into mammals. And here we're going to notice that the first piece right here is a vertical column or a backbone. So as we go down and the descendants start to come off of this tree of life, anything that is to the right here so anything that as we travel down our tree uh, is on the right is going to be an organism that has a backbone so we could write down for the backbone here you can see the pacific hagfish great white shark salmon ostrich crocodile or really any species that is in these branches and even further on down the tree down here. Okay. Another one that we might look at is jaws. So moving from this point on the tree down through our tree, we're going to notice that um, all of these animals are going to have jaws. And if we were to look at this hagfish right here, which is kind of a weird name, but because that hagfish is not below on our tree, um, those, the structure of jaw, we know that the hagfish would not have a jaw. So let's just click on a couple more so that you can see. You're going to notice that some of the, the um, branches here are empty, and that's because there are fossils that we're going to later on in this unit put in there. Okay, and here's for a last couple too to think about is that um, for neck and limbs, remember anything to the right here is going to have limbs. So birds, crocodiles, and then even anything in this mammals tab we could write down as having limbs. So if you want to go ahead and write those down um, on your piece of paper, we said that these are some different organisms that had a backbone. And as you noticed, as the evolutionary tree progressed, the number of organisms that had a neck and a backbone, there were a few less. And then as we started to get into organisms that had limbs with digits, our list became even smaller. So, to wrap up our writing um, piece here, now that we've had a chance to take a look at that tree of life, um, I want you to pause the video, um, even if you uh, were working on that simulation independently, and make sure that you have this paragraph right here completed. It's going to give you a chance to practice using some of our vocabulary and plugging it into the correct boxes uh, or the correct blanks I should say up here. So go ahead at this point pause the video and then we'll come back together and check it in a moment. Okay so let's take a second to check your thinking. Um, so as we're going through this really one of the big uh, concepts for this first chapter is that species are going to inherit their body structures. We've been talking about that a lot and talking about how that's going to help us solve where exactly that mystery fossil we've been looking into is going to be placed at the museum. And species are going to inherit those from their ancestors. If two living species have some of the same hopefully you went with body structures. This means that they are probably descendants of a common ancestor that also had the same body structures. So we can see that those body structures are really important to tying together which species had common ancestors. And now our last activity for the day, which is pretty fun. Um, we've got two species up here, two unknown species that you looked at at the beginning of class uh, with your warm up. And you're going to take a second. We've got four fossils down here. They've got all different types of structures. 
And what you're going to want to look through is you're gonna to wanna to decide out of these four fossils, fossil one, fossil two, fossil three, and fossil four, which of those looks more like the common ancestor of species A and species B? So take a second to think of yourself, for yourself. Is a common ancestor, is this species gonna be something that came before or something that came after? Hopefully you remember that a common ancestor means it's going to be a species that came before both species A and species B. Remember, that these are some important structures that you're going to want to look at. Um, the, the possible structures that we can observe with these fossils are the skull, the backbone tail, and then a front and a back limb. So what I would like for you to do to wrap up this lesson for today is think through for yourself, which fossil looks more like the common ancestor of species A and species B? If you're getting stuck, here are a couple uh, helpful phrases to help you get started. And to make sure as you are thinking through this um, that you are also explaining your thinking, not just saying which fossil you think is most closely related, but make sure that you are really pushing yourself to explain what you know as a paleontologist and what tells you that one of these fossils is gonna be more closely related than the other three. So, at this point in the video, you're going to want to pause, take a second, answer which of these is the common ancestor of species A and B. Here's your first sentence you're going to want to start with, and then going into explaining down here.